very orangey morning this morning with my cup of coffee. Uh, it's still rolling and bucking like hell. Uh, uh, the boat is bucking. It means the bow's going up and down. It's going to be hellish hard to get the anchor out. Um, I've got the engine started. That's a good thing. It started straight away. So I'm just kind of waiting till the sun comes up just to see what it looks like. Whether or not I actually go today. Because when I get down south, I'm going to have the, the weather still blowing me on. I'll be anchoring with my back to the reef just for a night until apparently the weather switches around tomorrow. It's all messy. It's just, I, I, I just want it to be normal so I can do something normal. I just need to pick up the anchor and go for a lovely, jolly sail down south. Mm. And it looks like there's a squall coming as well. That's the squally bit. And that's the rather nice bit over there. It is rather nice, isn't it? And that's the back of the boat bucking. Up on deck under the bimbley to have a look-see. It's a couple of hours later. The wind has changed a bit and the sea's flattened down, which is good. But the visibility is still bad. I can't see the marker that's just outside the bay there. Uh, the bimini is leaking, which means I can't use any uh, electrical stuff on it here. I see Mike over there. Maybe he's going to go. I haven't talked to him for a little bit. But the, the channel going down from here is very narrow. And there's bombies everywhere. Coral heads. And uh, the visibility is bad. You can't see them. I can't see the markers. I think he's going to leave. I had my coffee and my cornflakes. <laughs> I don't know what to do next. <laughs> got to hold her on course because there's a point there and there's this guy there. From here on the path down to the south of the atoll was a narrow, narrow passage. On one side was land and on the other side were reefs. Although there were markers, not all the reefs were clearly visible or marked on the charts. I was going to have to concentrate. The wind's just come up, so I had to take in some sail. Uh, boat's more or less under control now. Uh, there's a marker coming up, and then I have to make a right turn. Uh, and I'm not sure if I have to put the sail on the other side. And I've got the dinghy on the deck. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a tight, it's a tight little corner here. And this reef over there, and this reef there, and this bit over there. You are. Depth sound is still not working very well. Don't know what it's saying. Blowing straight onto that, look at it. That's a pro proper, honest to goodness reef with yellow tops to it. That's shallow. And here's a dead end. My heart is in my mouth. Oh dear. Yeah, that's what we signed up for. I'm gonna wait till I get well past that before I turn, but I can't go too far because there's land in front of me. Because it was drizzling most of the time, I had to have the tablet under the cover, so I had to keep running forward to see uh, what, exactly what was happening on the plotter. Uh, the land you could see, but once again, those uh, coral heads were hard to spot. Uh, when you saw them, you were usually too close. Wow. Can you see that? I nearly hit that. That's not on the chart.
an end to a long day. I have never sailed uh, in a situation like that before. Um, going down a reef, which was potentially beautiful, but the weather was atrocious. Just like England, it was awful. And then there was these bommies, these coral heads. I would nearly hit one, and maybe a second one, very close. Ooh, uh, uh, um, and it was uh, with having engine problems and things. I'm thinking, what happens if the engine doesn't start? My God! So I finally got here. I've been looking forward to coming to this place because there's stuff I want to do here, and that's doing shark dives. Yes, the stuff I've been planning. Uh, for a year before I got here and I'm actually at this place I've read all about it oh I hope it's better tomorrow I really really do please Wow, I've dreamt of this place for a long time. Not necessarily this location, but this, this scenario, this beautiful sea, my yacht out there at anchor, and here I am on this beautiful deserted beach. Um, all the crappiness, all the shit that has happened in the last few months has gone. This is just sublime this is another dream come true I can't words can't describe this these atolls uh, remained in seclusion for many many years uh, modern cruising boats like mine have only just started coming here and that's with the event of uh, GPS enabled uh, plotters uh, such as the, the, the pads that I use, iPads, Samsung tablets and so on and so forth and the modern software um, which you can plot your course with uh, in real time and also superimposed uh, uh, photographs of charts uh, of the areas that you're in uh, has enabled people to come to places because this is strewn with reefs you can't just come here uh, there was uh, some reefs down the way, there was a famous uh, racing yacht uh, hit a reef, uh, a well-known reef, but they just didn't look at the chart hard enough and they didn't see it and they went right over it, so it's easy done. But these islands, these atolls, these reefs, what you want to call them, have been occupied for many, many years. Uh, of course, they're French, uh, the local Polynesians have been here for hundreds of years. And at one time it had a huge population. You see Shaddy behind us there, <laughs> out by himself. There are a few other yachts here as well. Um, but people have lived here uh, for a long time. And what you might call civilization came in the 1800s. Uh, people like Gauguin, Robert Louis Stevenson, the guy that wrote Moby Dick, came to the Marquesas, the Polynesian Islands, and they visited. Some of them stayed a while as well. People actually lived on these clumps of rock in the middle of the Pacific and they survived. And what brought them here, the original ones, were missionaries uh, come to bring the word of God. And some say with that, that was the big downfall of the society. Uh, others would say otherwise. But uh, like it or not, uh, Christianity survives here. But there are remnants from those early days. I've been told there's a church out here. In the middle of this reef, there's a church. <laughs> I can't believe this is here. There's nothing else here at all. It's like your, your deserted island kind of thing. <laughs> and there's, a, there's remnants of a church here. And it's from the 1800s, I believe. Let's take a look.
And sure enough, above the door, it says 1879. I did read up later after I'd made this section of video and found out that it is in fact the first church ever to have been put on the atolls. The lintels above the doors look like they may have come from some old ships. Altogether, a fascinating place. And this is what fascinates me about this kind of history. That normal people have lived here, farmers, fishermen, not farmers, because there's no, they don't have topsoil here. <laughs> um, but yeah, fishermen, just normal people who lived and died probably led fairly short lives at that. And I, it, whether this is a church or a house, it doesn't matter really. This had people here, coming here, praying, living here, maybe making love here, having babies here, dying here. Uh, for over, you know, over a hundred years ago. This is just... Uh, and there's, there's nothing here now. What happened to them? Where are their descendants? Jeez, I just had to run out of there. I felt something tickling my legs. I looked down and there were mosquitoes all over my legs. I mean, really all over my legs. Oh, f me, sideways. <laughs> it's fucking scary. Back from the dead. Back from the dead. What an evil man. It's, it's Easy bike. <laughs> yeah, I was just getting bitten to hell, so I had to go and wash my legs. Then, uh, then he's popped up. Say hello, Easy Mike. Hello. <laughs> Scared the crap out of me. So it looks like not all the residents left. Some are still here. Um, it looks like there's probably four graves there. After the graveyard, Mike told me about a house that he discovered that was deserted. Uh, behind the house uh, was some interesting stuff. There was a water bowser, how the local guys uh, collect their water during the winter months. And also these, I think they're probably from fishing boats, Japanese fishing boats. The island is festooned with them, they're used as decoration. Then we went off on the hunt for something that I knew nothing about. What do we got here? This is purslin. Yeah. It's basically it's a superfood and you can eat everything but the root. It's a really super healthy, good green. It grows like a weed. What do you mean when it's super? Does it give you a really good erection? Or <laughs> no, no, it's just it's got like um, it's got uh, that every every thing you can imagine. In it. It's got this is it here, yeah. Yeah. Squeeze this. Mm -hmm. If you get a white milkiness, it's not the right stuff. Yeah. If you see a red dot in there, it's not the right stuff. But this is the right stuff. So we're on the other side of the reef. This is the uh, weather side. Um, Mike's back there collecting some more of that super food. Apparently it's got more um, um, uh, some things in it than anything else. Omegas, that's it. I don't know what an omega is, but uh, it's got lots of them in it anyway. Yeah, that's what I came here for. Yeah, now you feel like Michael Jackson. You got a boy. Like, yeah. <laughs> Harlem Glo Globetrotter. Yeah, actually, you look like Mr. Mr. So, Mr. So the, Mr. Atlas, wasn't it? So, so with this right now, I, I can, what I can do is put a line on it, and I can, as I let my anchor out, I can tie it to my chain, and it will help float the chain off the bottom of the sea. Ah. You, you want to have a lot of it on the bottom of the sea so you, so it doesn't drag, but then you know everything is dragging around on the bottom anyway, and it can hook up on all the bombing. It's really bad here, so I wanted a couple more of these, so I'm really stoked I found it. The trail ended when we came to an inlet, which we had to cross. Uh, and uh, I think what we'll probably do is float across on Mike's balls. Yeah. yeah. But luckily for me, they weren't needed. As the inlet was quite shallow, all I had to do was watch out for these strange poo-looking animals on the bottom. 
I'd sent Mike in front of me because uh, that way, if there were any crocodiles, alligators, bears, or anything nasty, he'd get eaten before me. My shorts almost got wet, but apart from that, it was quite an easy crossing, and we made it back to the sea. Then it was a quick stop for a Facebook selfie, and then back to the dinghy. But on the way, I stopped and slaughtered this coconut. And after doing a quick Daniel Craig impression, it was time to go home for a nice cup of tea. And this morning, the weather's done what it was uh, forecast to do. And that's the winds have changed uh, 180 degrees. So lots of boat action this morning. Uh, people getting their anchor chains wrapped around bombies. Yeah, these guys are actually from Plymouth, but I didn't get a chance to talk to them yet. Uh, I think they're moving their boat now. These guys are a bit close to me, still. Uh, they were even closer last night. They've just unwrapped their anchor chain, but they're still quite close. Had uh, dinner over there last night on my friend's boat with the two of them, uh, Bad Kitty and Moggy, uh, rafted together. I think these guys here are still having problems. There's one guy in the water, he's the spotter. Uh, he's got the authors, two of them, look. Uh, yeah, duck diving down to see where the chain is. And then giving directions to the guy on the boat. Left a bit, right a bit. I don't know if my chain's wrapped around a bomby or not, but I was here first, so uh, I don't have to move. If anybody's near me, they have to move. That's the rules. But the thing of it is, the boat is holding fast, so I'm not going to do anything. As long as the boat's sitting pretty, I'm happy. Yeah, there's another friend of mine over there uh, who's um, having problems. I think the guy from this next door boat has gone over to help him. With the weather looking the way it does today, I think it's probably editing day to day. Ha, ha, ha.